It's queer edge time, queer edge time. But I gotta tell you this, I gotta tell you this. Go team. Uh, real quick though, breaking news. Breaking news. Keep your eyes on the television because there is rain falling somewhere in America. Yes, and we here at QTN will have round the clock coverage about nothing. Yeah. Let me ask you this, is it just me, or does the press get a big old hard on from hurricanes? What's up with that? I don't know. As soon as the wind pushes one trash can over, 100 reporters come down with windbreakers and they rush in to tell us how much that poor trash can has suffered. Oh yeah, and how long it's going to take that poor trash can to rebuild. <laughs> I mean, really, 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 nobody, nobody out there enjoys a doobie and a disaster coverage on CNN more than Jackie Jet. I am down with a down comforter and a cup of cocoa, and I promise you this, I'll watch the whole damn world in. I'm happy with that. But certain members of the press, and by certain members of the press, I mean every damn one of them, uh, they like to insert their serious expressions and that kind of wind-blown hair into every little rain story, hurricane story. Boy, do they eat it up. All these reporters, what they're doing is they're searching for that, for that Cronkite announcing Kennedy's death moment of airtime. They want their own Hindenburg. Oh, oh, the humanity, and I'm part of it. Yeah, no one loves seeing themselves emote and experience TV anguish more than CNN's Anderson Cooper. Or Katrina Cooper, as I like to call him. You know, he's a super wealthy son of Gloria Vanderbilt. I don't know if you remember her. She's the woman who's synonymous with denim-covered asses. Cooper's bleeding heart is on the scene at Katrina to show us how cruel the big bad wolf of Hurricane is to the little piggies who can't afford a brick house. Yeah, now let me remind you, this dude has got more money than God, yet he is somehow feeling the pain of some Waffle House waitress who's lost everything. The white-haired handsome Coop, he is down with the destitute. Uh-huh. He is in with the impoverished. Uh-huh. He is dealing with the illin. Uh-huh. No. No. No, no. His Geraldo-esque and exaggerated emoting can only be compared to, basically compared to, a room full of half-drunk drama queens watching Terms of Endearment. But dude, I, listen, I want to tell you something, Mr. Cooperman. Those hurricane folks, they don't care about your emotions. Uh-uh. They don't care about having their lives on camera. Uh-uh. They want some green honey from your mama's jean machine, honey. Uh-huh. Now, I do love Katrina Cooper just as much as the next homo. I mean, I love his elfin charm and foppish fashion sense, but honey, I'm assuming, Anderson, I can call you honey. Uh, as our gal pal Bab Streisand says, enough is enough is enough is enough. My God, let it go. <laughs> anyway, tonight we're going to be emoting from our own little queer space, and our hearts bleed for the cutting edge of the queer edge. Miss Jackie Inks with News from the Edge is here. My hurricanes and halter tops, the Barbarellas, are here. One of America's top bloggers from Pink is the New Blog, Trent Venegas, is here. And another reality TV genius, wow! Tonight we have Miss Tony Ferrari. <laughs> and a veterinarian who also could be a vegetarian, with advice for those of us who have children with four legs, Dr. Stephen J. Smith is on the show. And our co-host, Wow, what a great time we have had with this chick. I can't believe she stuck with us the whole week. She it proves she really is. There's something um, mentally challenged about her. Ladies and gentlemen, Kim Goals is back with us tonight. And let's not forget the great music of our band this week, The Desperation Squad. 
So no time to change your mind. If it ain't broke, please freaking break it. Because Queer Edgers, we are, we are, we is, a go. What are you doing right now? It's your reality. Make it up. Vodka martini. Two olives. This is my reality. What's yours? What's yours? What's yours? Jackie Jack, and uh, I'm sexually ambiguous. Um, here's the thing. We have had the most amazing week this week. Not only have we had Kim Coles, who has been uh, not only one of the funniest chicks in the whole world, uh, but one of the sweetest chicks we've ever had on this show. And I want, when she comes out here in a minute, I want the cameras to get a really good close-up of her skin, because this bitch has skin to die for. She has the smoothest, creamiest, I just don't, it's just like, you know, coming from someone like me who's, you know, got the face of the pizza man, is so jealous of a woman like this, but uh, her beauty, is, is, do they say beauty is only skin deep? I think that's a lie, because her, her beauty is, is right here, and it's also on the inside. It's like, Right inside of here, I saw it the other day. Her, she had a lot of beauty going on. I think it was over. In fact, let's bring her on out and find out where it is. Come on, Kim Cole. How are you? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, Thank here's you. what I was talking about. Uh, here's the beauty. The beauty that's uh, not. This is skin beauty. But then also there's beauty all in here. And I want you to notice a little, this, look at this, check out this beauty. So, uh, some might call it booty, I call it beauty. I'll take it, Daddy. <laughs> hey, Daddy Jack. How are you, it's honey? It's been an awesome week. I've been having a blast. Uh, we, are, we, we don't want you to go. In fact, what we're trying to figure out, even if we're not taping, mm -hmm. just let's just come hang out here and sit sure, on the sofa and sure. chat for a while. Do I get paid for that too? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't get, get paid for, for this First of all, I didn't know anyone on this thing was getting paid. Are people getting I, paid? I don't get paid for this at all. No one well, told me. Well, I had me. fun anyway. I thought it was a big charity thing. For I thought it was to help keep Jack out of Betty Ford <laughs> Foundation, but no, it's not. Uh, tell me this, really, seriously, have you had a good time this I've week? I've had a blast. I've okay. learned a lot. Uh-huh. Uh, you are fun. And, oh, thank you. Uh, uh, almost, you know, I'm almost worshiping you. Yeah. Almost. Well, okay. Uh, you know, I'll be genuflecting by the end of the show. Okay. I'm giving Jack uh, his love. Okay. But would you drink my Kool-Aid if I mixed it up? We're not quite there yet, are you? No, not quite not there. Not to the Kool-Aid <laughs> stage. Not quite there. Well, okay. Maybe by the end of the show. Okay. Okay. I I'd watch you make it. Could I possibly I convert you into Scientology? At this point? <laughs> I'd rather drink the Kool-Aid. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, that's what I thought. Yeah. So no oh, personality test. I don't test. mind having a, a glow-in-the-dark baby like Katie Holmes is going to have. Yeah. Oh, that baby's going to glow in the dark. That baby is going to do more than glow in yeah. the dark. Yeah. And jump on sofas. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see uh, Oprah's face? She was like, would you jump down on my... Uh, put some plastic <laughs> on my sofa for next time, Tom. He's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Yeah. And the baby's going to glow in the dark. Yeah. That was the weird... That was a surreal experience, it was. that whole thing. It was odd. Because... <laughs> Yeah. Ah, but you know, I, I still to this day think, because this is the way I was interpreting it, because he was on there going, I love her, I love her, I love her, but in reality what he was doing was going, I love vagina, I swear on her, I love vagina, I love vagina, believe me, trust yeah, me, yeah, if yeah. I keep telling myself that, I'm going to believe it. <laughs> and, uh, he thinks the man doth protest a little yeah, too me don't loudly. Yeah, think me so too. too. Listen, um... Uh, you stay right where you are because we have okay. tons to okay. chat about tonight. Oh, yeah. And again, 
Uh, tons of perverts. Last night, can I ask you this? Was it your first time to ever, ever uh, have a guest that you could trample on? Sure, that was interesting. That, I don't was, know that very I was very interesting. interesting. It was soft and cushy all at the same time. Yeah. Trample. Yeah. Trample. Uh, but I think you know where. Uh, there was one point that wasn't getting so soft and cushy. <laughs> and we'll talk about that yeah. later. But right now, let's go with News from the Edge with Jackie Inside. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Jett, from our crack legal eagle team here on the edge. This past September at a rape trial in New York City, eyewitness Roberto Suarez got up on the witness stand and testified that he had seen two men talking with a waitress just minutes before she ran out of the restroom claiming to him she had just been raped. The prosecutor asked Mr. Sanchez if he currently saw the two men in the courtroom and he replied he did indeed and was then asked to point them out. As the two defendants sat in their chairs and looking down, Suarez did his civic duty and pointed out the two men. They were juror number eight and alternate juror number three. <laughs> that trial has been declared a mistrial and the jurors have now been charged with the crime. More from the Big Apple. We found this in the I can't get out of my own way file. Natalia McLennan was put under arrest recently in Manhattan, but she did not go quietly into the night. She was screaming at police and claiming false arrest as the men in blue took her from a New York City courtroom directly to a lockup after she was charged with prostitution. McLennan had been picked up scantily dressed, but said that just dressing like a prostitute doesn't necessarily make you one. We here on the edge couldn't agree more. Maybe the problem is they would have listened to you if you hadn't posed for the cover of New York Magazine acknowledging that you provide sex for money and proclaiming yourself to be the city's top grossing escort. <laughs> Finally tonight, listen in, Queer Edgers, from the health desk, we here on the edge decided to take a true peek into this possible bird flu pandemic that the president is fanning the flames of. The big. The big guy, <laughs> the big guy admits that at this point it's not a pandemic at all, and in fact it isn't even transferable from human to human. But that did not stop RGW from asking Congress for 7.1 billion in emergency funding to prepare, prepare for that not imminent, not pandemic, not even real at this point possibility. Now, I think we all admit it's better to be safe than sorry. But I also found out that the only medicine, from what we know, which reduces the symptoms of the avian flu is this drug called Tamiflu. Now, Tamiflu was developed and patented in 1996 by a California biotech firm, Gilead Sciences. Since the bird flu scare, the global rush to buy Tamiflu has sent Gilead stock soaring up nearly 20%. Who was the CEO of Gilead back then? Who still owns a large share in the company? Who still owns very valuable stock options, which means right now he is reaping a personal windfall? It's a guy you may have heard of. His name is Donald Rumsfeld. Yes, that exact Donald Rumsfeld. Don't you, don't you love a good coincidence to go into a commercial break? We here on the edge do it. Lots more, Kimmy's here, Jack is here. We'll be back right after this, stay with us. So on.
a queer edge, you know this next band proudly admits that Courtney Love bought some of their swag. Please welcome Desperation Squad! I saw her with you. You must have been abashed in the barbecue. Did you find her in the bargain bin? Title change the brain pin tin. Huh? Well, it's an insult to Scruffy if I call her a dog. And insult to Arnold if I call her a hog. She's not far from fat. She's far from cute. Could be a product of Mr. Rue. Your girlfriend's ugly. Your girlfriend's ugly. Your girlfriend's ugly, brother sucker. Your girlfriend's ugly. Represents the American values more than that. The, that. That. Yeah. I like. I liked how the big head and the little head matched. Did yeah. you notice that? That was uh -huh. good. I like that. But I got to tell you, uh, you know, Daddy locks the bo, but that's some hefty bo happening <laughs> over there. It's a good thing we don't have smell o vision. Uh, <laughs> and it's a sad thing that they please buy this band's album so they can purchase some deodorant. <laughs> at some point in their life, and I mean that in the nicest way. Yeah, I do. Uh, I, I dig. Daddy loves the, the man you smell. Are, you're a man smell guy. <laughs> to a point. <laughs> you know, when the New York Times writes about a blog, about your blog, then you know you've made it. And this man has blogged his way into the big time. Say hello to Mr. Trent Venegas. Yes. Come here, sit down. <laughs> oh my God, you're so. Please tell me you're elite. You're not 12 years old, are you? I'm not. Okay, I'm not good. Uh, then we. Are you 18? I'm a little older than 18. Oh, are you old enough for you and I to have sex? Uh, I don't know if I'm that old. <laughs> oh, very good. Oh. Very good answer. Now get off my sofa. <laughs> <Now>. <laughs> Listen, here's the whole thing. Pink is the new blog. Yeah. Everyone's chatting about this. Everyone's wanting to kiss your ass so they can get, be a part of your blog. The difference here is that I just want to kiss your ass. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and so that's the difference between me and the rest of the showbiz folks out there. 
I think Kim would probably, she'd probably kiss your ass too if she could get your. Yeah, we're sure. not above it. Sure, <laughs> whatever it takes. Anything for the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a trooper. Yeah, Not sure. since Ethel Merman, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> has there been a showbiz trooper. Tell us about, you're fascinated with the Britney, aren't you? Yes, I am. And I love the Britney, too. She's my favorite. Okay, is that how you started? In, tell us your story, please. I started out blogging. Yeah, I did a personal blog just about me, me and my friends, and stuff that I wanted to, that I used to do. Oh, look, um, we're seeing some of his blog photos back here. Yep. Yeah. And I, it didn't start out like this at all. It wasn't, it wasn't this hot in the beginning. It was very boring. It was about me and my friends, stuff that we did, um, hanging out in Detroit. And uh, no one read it. My friends didn't even read it. So I kind of figured well, I honey, there's not a lot there to read. Exactly. Uh -huh. Well, I made it black and pink to give it a different sort of feel. And uh, I don't know, like people started paying attention. Uh, so. Not more than just paying attention. It became like the hottest blog on the internet. That's what people tell me. That's what people tell you. Now, where, other than writing about Britney, mm -hmm. and who else do you write about? Who are your faves to write about? The Hollywood It Girls, Paris, Lindsay, Hillary, Nicole Richie, like all of them. The girls that like to go out and have fun, they like to get photographed, um, those are the girls I like to talk about. And, w Jackie, you have a question? Well, I, I was just wondering, I mean, literally when you started, you know, eight, you have eight or ten people hitting, yeah. how long did it, did it take to go from getting ten hits a day to 50,000 a day? I mean, that's, that's not exactly like, well, gee, and then the neighborhood found out. Your right. neighborhood is, Amer you know, the world. Yeah, and for the first two years, it really was somewhere in the, around a thousand, a thousand people a day for the first two years. And then when I made it black and pink, it started going up. So from, Jan from June of last year to June of this year, it took me a year to get a million. And now, and now I'm, I'm sorry, doing, can we get, what is this? And now I'm doing more than a million um, a month. A million a month? Yeah. Okay, I'm the technology dum-dum. I know nothing about technology, but do you make any money doing this? I make a little bit of money. I don't like doing advertising too much because I don't like pop-ups and that sort of thing because um, when I'm doing, when I'm reading blogs, I hate that stuff. It's just right. intrusive. So you just do this for your own enjoyment and for the enjoyment of your million... Yeah, block, I, block, yeah his, exactly. voice is, his voice. Now, here's, here's where the ethics come into it. Your voice is going to become valuable. Yeah, in other that's words, the whole you thing. can sell. You can become, you know, hi. I think this is cool. Right. Yeah. And if you say that about somebody, you just maybe sold fifty thousand copies of an album for someone. You know, and 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 I really do want. That's to keep a lot it, of pressure. I really do want to keep it my voice, though, because yeah. that's really the way it's always been. You know, I'm just a guy from Detroit. I don't live in New York. I don't live in L.A. Um, I report on this stuff from the Midwest. So mm -hmm. that's just the way um, that it's been. And that's kind of the way I want to keep is it. Is black as a new blog a play on? Pink. I mean, pink as a new blog is a play on pink as a new blog. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yep. Uh. What are you doing? <laughs> you all right? Are you okay? not feeling well? No. I, th well, I think I just broke my water. <laughs> oh, it's a Britain. It's Brit oh, oh, please help me. <laughs> Help this baby, please, Trent. Happy to my baby. Oh, no photos, no photos, no photos. Here's your poppers now, honey. Get her some blow. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the first homo to give birth on television. I think that Trent, that's for you, honey. Thank you so much. Now you have your own little Britney so baby. But here's the thing. Do you, you're now becoming part of. What was that? Oh, Tom that was that was Tom Delay's money jar. Oh no. oh no. Okay, you're now becoming part of the paparazzi. I mean, you're becoming someone that's now. You're on my TV show. Now I'm going to be chatting about you. Right. You're becoming a celebrity. Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, no, it's not. Yeah, I guess. It's yes, I am. I guess I am. Okay. So how are you planning on coping with that? Because now Kim and Jackie and I may have blogs, and we may write, oh, Trent was on our show, and we found him to be very handsome, and yes, he made a comment about my age, <laughs> but we let that go. Uh, you know, that type of thing. Now, how are you going to feel about that? You know, I guess I'll just take it as it comes. I mean, as it's, getting, as it's gotten to become more popular, there's been a lot of, there's, there's backlash. There's a lot of um, negativity and, you know, some homophobic things. There's and always that, though. That but you know what, anybody thing. popular is exactly. going to have, you know, that's part of it. That's yeah. exactly but true. But you know what, here's the thing. You, you don't come across like a bitchy queen. No. No. I try no. not. I mean, I, I only know how to speak from my own voice. Right. So. 
Do you think I come across as a bitchy coin? Not at all. Thank you. How Do you think I even? Are, how many? You, get, you say you have a million people reading your blog. How many people are posting on it? I mean, is there a percentage you just go read it every day for the laugh or the? I get a lot of email, a lot of email, and then there's a comment section where people um, leave their comments, whether they agree with what I say or not. Um, okay. And you know, it's it's gotten. Can you start this rumor? Terrible. Can you just do this for us? Can you start a rumor that yeah. Jackie Jet? and Kim Coles are having an affair mm. and she's getting ready to have Jackie Jet's baby. Absolutely. Yes. And I think it's just, just a little get, mulatto child. Yeah, just get it out there. <laughs> yeah. Just try to get mulatto it out there. Alien. Thank you. Hang out with us, will you? For sure. And Thank we'll be so back much. with more Queer Edge. Take us away. Desperation Squad! <laughs> That's the way. Uh huh. Uh huh. I like it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Listen, I got to tell you a story about some dogs and some cats and even goldfish. All of them consider themselves very lucky if they end up in a homo household. And if they're really lucky, they end up with a homo vet too. So please welcome our homo vet to ask him some homo dog questions. <laughs> How's that? Come on out here, Dr. Stephen G. Smith! Oh, yeah, sir. Give Daddy a hug. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, have a seat. Hello. You know, one of the most important things in selecting a vet is the quality of the vet's butt. And I, that's why I wanted to give you a pat on the butt. Well, I do squats just for and that. And you reason. do squats. Do. And, and so it's important. When you're going in and looking for a good vet, get a squeeze of their butt. Because if they have a tight butt, you know that they're a hard worker. Am I right? Very true. Very yeah, true. very true. Now tell me this. How long have you... Hey, he's cute. I told you. Yeah, you tell me. He is cute. Okay, we'll forget about that for a minute. Serious. Now, 
How? Oh, look behind you. It's, are those your two little those puppies? Oh, oh, they are. Those are like my two puppies. They're, I adopted them last year from a Shih Tzu rescue organization. I have two um, just like that. Oh, yeah? I have a, a brown and white brindle I call two-tone, and I have a gray one that I call pencil sketch. Okay. And well, they're this is, just this like is Scamper that. and Tigger. Oh. Now, let's talk they about... Let, names, okay. Here's the thing. I have... Uh, we're all going to want to talk about our dogs. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but this is my freaking show, so I go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's, I'm sorry, it's just the way it works. I didn't make the rules, I just enforced them. Uh, but I have one dog from a, from a vet and one purebred. Okay. And my purebred, which is a lab, has had, we have spent no th thousands of dollars. Uh, that's uh, Bruiser is hidden behind and Bubba's in front. Thus the name of my company, Bubba Brew, which is the name Very of my cute. production company. And now, the Bruiser, the, the lab, has had skin problems from day one. Very expensive. The dog we got from the pound has never had one single problem. Do you, can you explain that? Uh, it's something called hybrid vigor. Uh -huh. If they're a purebred, usually they pass more problems down through the line of, of dogs through That's genetics. True. If you have mixed breed dogs, you, you, you cancel out bad genes. So the mixed breed dogs are more healthy in yeah, general. Yeah, I think mutts are always a little bit healthier, yeah. right? Yeah. It's true. A mutt, I mean, it's not as, you know, if you want a, a, a pure one, but I've always been told if you just want a great dog to run with, the mutts have none of the problems. Oh, yeah. yeah. Much and, better and, and i got to tell you, the, the, the mutt here, as I hate to call him because he is my son. Now, there's Bruiser. Oh, look at Daddy Jack. Uh, and Bruiser and Daddy Jack, we like to swim. <laughs> and, and that is when he... That's how he gets his, the most exercise. He, he, he's a dog that would rather swim than go for a walk. Uh, but skin problems, thousands of dollars. Which brings me to this point. If someone is adopting a dog, mm -hmm. it is important that they know that a dog, that what you pay for that dog is the least amount of money you're going to put out oh, over yeah. a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's free. Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> so can you talk to us about how people, you know, should think about finances when they're adopting a dog. Well, that's a good point. Um, I think that's probably one of the things I, I, in the 15 years I've been a vet, the thing I find the most frustrating is when people don't or can't take good care of their pets financially, emotionally, physically. Um, they might be moving to an apartment that doesn't take dogs, so, oh, I'm just going to take it to the shelter and get rid of it. What, what is up with that? I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get that either. Yeah. And where you present somebody with an estimate, say their dog's hit by a car and they need some major work, and they're like, well, I don't have it. Just put it to sleep. Uh, yeah, I, I have a hard I, time coming to grips with those kind of yeah, things. Yeah, I don't get it. Well, you know, there's a mindset, and I know you share this with me, that I don't consider that my dog is my dog. I kind of have this commitment that I'm going to try to provide for it a place to live its life. I don't own it. I'm sort of, you know you're, what I mean? Well, I'm, I'm providing a, a place for my guardian. dog. You're their yeah. caretaker, and it should be a lifetime commitment. It should be you know, not a temporary thing or a disposable thing. It should I can't be imagine just dispose. I can't imagine. But people do that, don't they? Oh, yeah. I mean, people have, will have a dog for five or six years, and then come in and go, you know, I'm, we're moving. We don't, you know. Oh, I know. I hate that. And I'll send people out the door, too, sometimes. Just, I won't do it if it's not right. a sick old pet. And in the whole scheme of things, what is the most, uh, I mean, if you're keeping your dog vaccinated and spayed, neutered, and blah, 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 all that stuff, uh, what is the most expensive medical trauma that can happen to a dog? Oh, trauma-wise, I guess being hit by a car. Right. You know, they can break bones. They can have internal injuries. You could be looking at uh, anywhere from, say, 500 to $2,500 as mm. a you know, ballpark estimate. Right. For, is for there a maintenance schedule like most dogs? If, there, to be honest, I don't have mine on a schedule. I just kind of you know, do it when I feel uh, it, they need it. But is there a schedule that for, for maximum... Once a year, you know, a checkup. And, and veterinarians are kind of getting away from vaccines. I mean, it used to be that those of vets' bread and butter was vaccines. And now uh, it's more, you know, healthcare and vaccines are a little less important. They're not like the, the primary focus of why you take your dog to the vet. But now there's pet insurance, yeah. which I haven't got into yet because I, I, I simply haven't got enough information on it. And that's why you're here. Oh. Please well, tell me. There's a few pet insurance companies out there. There's one in Orange County that's probably the biggest one. Um, called VPI. Okay. And they reimburse people for their expenses to a certain percent or a certain ceiling. But or yeah, that, there's a but the ceiling is rather small, isn't it? Mm, or the ceiling know. is rather low. I don't really know the, the exact numbers, but people who have insurance tend to be, you know, go ahead, do whatever, because I have insurance. Okay, but it, I, it was my understanding that it's only up to twenty-five hundred and 
or something like there that? There might be some limits, like, but very few veterinary bills would be over, say, $5,000 right. or even $2,000. So mm -hmm. you, do you suggest it? I mean, is something would, we should look I into? Would. Yeah, it's more expensive if you start a dog when they're older, when they're an adult, but uh, puppies, you know, cheap. Okay, but if we, let's say we have a dog five years old, what's insurance going to cost on it? Oh, you know, I have no idea. Uh, it might be a few hundred dollars a year. It might be less, I'm not sure. Okay. I, don't, I don't need it for my dog, so. Yeah, <laughs> I know, it must be, do all your friends that have dogs ask for free uh, advice? And some free, do, some yeah. do. And I, I, you know, I don't have my own hospital, which helps me out a lot. Right. I work at other people's hospitals, to try to, like a temp. And so I, my excuse is, well, I can't really, you know, get you that yeah. because I, you know, are, are there animal specialists? In other words, if my dog gets hit by a car, do I immediately take him to my vet or do I find an emergency vet? Or It depends what time of day. Um, most veterinarians will see emergencies during the daytime when they're open. Uh -huh. um, but at night, there's, you you know, got it, yeah. there's less. And one thing I want to leave with before we go to the band is pet owners always have the nearest emergency 24-hour clinic mm -hmm. uh, on your refrigerator or somewhere. Absolutely. Speed Take dial. a test drive. Know where your uh, where your closest emergency vet is. Yeah, very is good. Is that idea. good advice? Oh, very Have good. Have I been to junior high or why? <laughs> at least, at least. Uh, absolutely. Will you stick around? All we're right. gonna right now. We're gonna go from uh, dogs to a different form of dog, the Desperation Squad. <laughs>
television is the launching pad for many celebrities these days. And one of the success, success, success stories from this world is the beautiful Tony Ferrari. <laughs> Honey. What's up, baby? We haven't seen you since our Halloween shindig, and uh, you were a little cocktailed, honey. Cocktailed? I was out in the parking lot doing shots. Okay. Heck yeah. Well, okay, then not cocktail, just liquored up. I was hammered. Uh, well, up. That's what we like. Honesty. <laughs> Honesty is the best policy. <laughs> and uh, that's why Tony and I met at Betty Ford. Uh, yes, we did. <laughs> years ago, we fell in love because we used to sneak bottles of booze in. It was the Jack. <laughs> I know. It was the Jack. He brought us and, together. Uh, but we made a killing in that place because uh, we were like, Liz Taylor was there and she was buying booze off of us. And, and Liz is getting know. hammered and I'm stealing her jewelry. Uh, I think you're stealing her jewelry. <laughs> What is going on with you? Well, first tell us the shows. Tell our audience the shows that you were on. But here's oh. what I want you to do. Can you do this for me? What do you want me to do? As you tell us about the shows, I want you to, <laughs> oh, no. to begin each sentence with ooh la la. So it makes it sound, it's going to make it sound all more impressive. Like ooh la la, I started on the show, blah, 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 and then ooh la la, I went on. So do it like that because I swear you'll find you'll be much more impressive and we're trying to get okay, on. Okay, can in, I do it with up here? Yeah, okay. and we're trying to get on in France, so this might <laughs> <help>. <laughs> no, look right there. They might kick me out. Okay, tell us ooh your... la la, first show was La Cruz. Uh -huh. Ooh la la, second show was... Born dude. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, born like, dead? Blind date. I should have been born dead. It was oh, bad. you did blind date? Yeah. Oh my god. Fuck. She just okay. go for it. Ooh, la la, la soin, paradise hotel. Okay, was that, uh, <laughs> was that Now the dude's like that. Now which one do you show the most tits in? None, actually. Well, I, I showed well, quite a bit. What is the purpose of You know, no, 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 no. Okay. Because I showed a lot in Paradise because like all the guys I was on the show with were like smoking hotties. Uh -huh. And the girls were hot. And you get really drunk and really hammered, and you just go skinny dipping all night long. Ooh la la! Ooh la la! It was yeah. Skinny dipping. Okay, so pr the, the then, premise of Paradise Hotel was what? Uh, just basically, I was there just to cause a lot of drama. Okay. And Did then after that, it folded into uh, Kill Reality, which just finished airing. Oh yeah, with our friend Rockin. Yeah, yes. with okay. my baby Rockin. Uh huh. And then we had our film, The Scorned. Right. Now let me ask you this. In any of these reality shows, did you get laid? You know what? Love Cruise, I did. Okay. I got well, some. Well, we know it wasn't my liking. We know that right no. off the bat. Do you know how many times I've tried? I will. Do you know how many times I've tried? <laughs> I've got naked fun. Uh, <laughs> it's the same thing, honey. So, you and me are no better. Uh, not going to get there either way. So If you, I'll hold them down. You take first crack and then I, I go in. I've tried that, Jackie. Now, I've tried that in the dressing room. He gets away every time. I know where he lives. He's just honorary, that rocking. That's all you can say. Uh, but then, go on. What, what were you saying? Then the next show was what? Oh, it's just the film. We have the scorned and then uh, I'm in Which the was, That was pretty crappy, wasn't it? Can I say that? You know what? I will. You know what? I don't care because I'm not going to do another one. Yeah, it was possibly the worst film. But yeah. you know what? In the ratings, the only thing I honest to God cared about was how I did. Yeah. And I'm doing good. Yeah. So hey, did you get a good review? Screw everybody else. else. Yeah. Except Riken got a good review too. He did. Yes. Cool. Uh, I mean, I don't know what you know. I do shitty shows. <laughs> Uh, Nothing can be worse than mine. I do them five nights a week. And, <laughs> so, uh, and, and I get crappy reviews. So I, I'm I'm, I, we're, I think we're, we're like in sync on a lot of things. We can't get rocking. We can't get, you know. You're, now, what was the show you got laid on, though? Love Cruise. Okay. And what was Love Cruise? It was a, just a 16 singles set out to get drunk and try and make it to the end for $250,000, which is... Okay, Nothing. did you, but you didn't get the 250000 No. Who I, did? Oh, some idiot named Melissa. Okay, did she get laid? <laughs> she, she got laid afterwards, and then she screwed over her boyfriend. So she got, like, she had a, oh, she was just a train wreck. That girl's yeah. a nightmare. But she you got two hundred fifty grand, so she did something right. They need to make a reality show based on Christian values. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and that's what reality TV is missing. <laughs> 
<laughs> these days. Uh, it should be like, uh, let, uh, find the Lord. Whoever can find, find the, the Lord, Lord first. So a bunch of people just running out in the woods? Look at, yeah, looking for the Lord. <laughs> Have you, you know, and then you create challenges for them like, you know, uh, Pat Robertson's in your face. And you're like, ah! I don't know. I mean, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, which is usually the only place I think <laughs> from to begin with. Where are you going? Where do you see yourself in five, ten years? Uh, definitely out of reality and shopping my own sitcom right now. I, well, what I is just, your sitcom? I just met my dream man and I just got off the... Oh, Me? Well, you're number two. Okay. But my dream man is Jason Statham. Lock, stock, two smoking barrels, the transporter. Uh, uh, have you dated him? I'm working on it. You're working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it. But I just got off set of Crank. The new film with Lakeshore, and I'm like all over it. That's what I want to do. I want to yeah. be action. I want to so get in there. And Jackie just got off crank. Mm. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't get off it. I, I, I ran out of money. <laughs> so you, the two of you have <laughs> that in common. <laughs> it's it's amazing how we're all like connected in some uh, Kevin Fried Bacon way. <laughs> Uh, right now, thank you so much. Stick around, honey, because I, I ain't through with you. Okay. Uh, right now, we're going to hear, speaking of Christian values. Oh, we have had such a great night on the Queer Edge. Such a fun night. Such a wacky night. Such a crazy, crazy night. But life is more than just about being crazy. 
with the exception of George Bush. <laughs> it's about seriousness. It's about a learning experience. It's not, oh no, not a learning experience. It is a fun learning experience. And that's why we have these beautiful people, most of them, assembled here. Uh, and we're going to ask them, what is the one thing that they have learned from tonight's show? Because Queer Edge is about no child left behind, no drug left behind. And what better way to start us out with, uh, we have Mr. P on the sofa. Now, let me just start out by saying, Mr. P is your name. That is not an offer to pee on my sofa. <laughs> so let's just start with you, Mr. P, on the sofa. What have you learned today? Well, well first of all, we, the, the D Squad really appreciates you letting us play, and we have a couple gifts for you. Um, one is the uh, Naked oh. Panda Man clock. Oh, and then, that is beautiful. I love that. And my guitar player especially wanted to uh, be able to uh, give you this. It's the Super Queer t shirt. Super oh, queer. my God. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I Thank love you. And that. And, and, and yes. what I've learned is I smell bad. I don't. Uh, I don't no, but, it, but yes, sometimes what you need to do is to work on the odor. It's a. I like bad odor. Yours is just a bit off. My suggestion: lay off the olives. <laughs> Just my idea, Can but do. this. Thank you for this T-shirt. I know gay people, so I might give it to them. Uh, <laughs> Trent, my friend, my close personal blog friend, who is now the father of my child. That's right. What did you learn today, Daddy? I've learned today that hurricanes give Anderson Cooper a hard on, and that's important to know. That is good to know, isn't it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you caught that. That's important. What about you, Tony? <laughs> How can you pass that one? Uh, I've learned that since Betty Ford, my heart has grown more and more for you every day. Uh, that is, that's what Betty Ford does. She brings, she brings alcoholics together. That's what she does. That's what she does best. What about you, Doctor? I learned about a cool new blog I'm going to check out. And yep. I learned a new use for packaging tape. Yes, there you go. <laughs> And Kim, what have you learned? We've I'm loved sure. having you here so I'm, much. I've enjoyed my yeah. stay thoroughly, and Amen. please lose my telephone number. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing, I'm teasing. I, I have learned that maybe I should give up the dog of the two-legged variety and perhaps get a four-legged variety. It'll work better. Ooh, better. Jackie? Better. Um, actually, I've learned that next Halloween, I want the parking lot. Okay. All right, take us away, guys. <laughs> 